Good morning, Internet. Welcome back to Perfect Apocalypse Patches Inferno. In the last video, I ended up trying to go for the straight-up murder-everybody route, and it worked out kind of well, even though I ended up making some people really happy. Uh, in this route, I plan on trying to make everybody really happy, and I plan on getting the good ending. Or, the canon perfect ending. Perfect ending. So let's get into it. We all, we already know all this jizz. Um, yes, I want to hang out with you guys. Don't think I really have a choice. Why am I accidentally hanging Skip? Patches tries to enter the kitchen. Patches, are you a snacky boy? All of Pats rapidly on their thigh while calling him towards them in the most demeaning way possible. Stop that this isn't sin. Aw, are you hangry? Olive pulls the bacon bis a bacon biscuit out of his pocket. Out of their pocket? Of their overalls. Just because you're not allowed out of my sight doesn't mean I can't. you can't have a treat. Everyone in the room stares at Olive cheering on Patches to come eat some bacon treat. The attempt to enter the kitchen doesn't seem worth the hassle. Patches ignores Olive and walks away. They end up eating the bacon treat themselves. Avoiding eye contact. It doesn't look like Patches and Angel would want to talk to each other. It's really sad because I want them to both make up. Olive is chatting with Angel. They notice Patches staring. Patches! Olive tries to give Patches a hug and manages to dodge it. Olive, you act as though I'm dead or something. But you are dead. Point taken. What are we doing here again? I'm just supposed to have a play date with friends. Or perhaps you'd like to take me up on my offer to enact some revenge. Aw, you couldn't hurt anyone even if you wanted to. Which you couldn't, because you're a good boy now and I trust you. <laughs> of course. Anyway, we're all meeting here because Coco has some super good news about the zombies. We just have to wait until she gets here. Maybe while we wait, you can say hi to everyone. There's nothing in the world I'd rather do. Yay! All of Hugs Patches this time successfully, he extends his claws but is immediately shocked by his collar. Ugh. I think we've got all of the other options on how to get people happy during the intro. And if you've seen the last video, like you've already seen this intro, I'm not gonna blow hard you with this. So BRB. And we're back. Communal school day. Banner painted in a rush. From afar, it looks pretty cute. But Olive was behind this. Portrait commemorating the founding of Kimono Town. Kimono Woods was lush and green at this time. Alright. First up, Homek! Homek. Attend class. Welcome to Homek! Oh, hey, Pat. I mean, Angel! So, Koopa decided you'd take Homek first, huh? Ernie tries to smile. Be an asshole. I'm not going to pretend to be friends with you. You disgust me. Oh, thank dog. You disgust me too. Great. Now that that's out of the way, I'll be sitting quietly in the corner, plotting your demise until the battle ends. Patches turns around and begins walking away. Right into a cat. Angel! So you followed me to home, class, home at class, eh? Everywhere I turn, there's more on. Alright, everyone, shut up. It's time to start class here of the rules. <laughs> We're going to learn how to bake. We're going to have fun. We're going to pair it with cats and dogs. Ernie looks excited while the rest of the class groans audibly. Shut! Go part up, partner up, and we'll start. Some students are frozen with indecision. Others begin pairing up begrudgingly. The fight looks like it's about to break loose. Aw, oh, I really wanted to be your partner, Angel. Oh. Looks like I gotta go tor torment some poor dog. Feel free to help me. Coco, cats and dogs only, huh? I guess there's no other dogs that you're super good close pals with. Maybe we could be partners? What? Brandy, look at this mess. Coco gestures to the, cat, uh, to the class. Cats are chatting with cats and dogs with dogs. It's a pretty mundane scene. Looks like animals on the edge of pandemonium. I need to focus on supervising. We're going to be partners with Pat, a mean angel. Someone's gotta keep an eye on him. 
What? Wait, wait, wait. Dude, anything but that. Look, he's got the collar on. He can't hurt anyone. And I bet he knows that if he messes today up, he'll rot away just like the rest of the zombies. I actually welcome the sweet release of death. See, Brownie? The kid's got nothing to lose. Why are you... You're, that's why you're his partner. A sick. Class is started. Coco walks everyone through the recipe written on the chalkboard in front of him, in front of the room. The recipe is easily customizable, and it's up to pairs to collaborate on the flavor. When the cakes are baked, everyone is to report to Coco and be graded on their friendship. Well, this is easy. We're both dogs, right? Bacon it is! We said I like bacon. Oh, right. I forgot you're a posh little prince who needs everything his way or he'll end up shanking someone. Exactly! Try it, buddy. I can't wait to see you shock yourself into a coma with that little kitty collar. Or the kinky kitty collar. I'll just sit right here until you bring back the ingredients for a bacon cake. Got it? And when did we agree that I would be the one baking this cake? When you broke my flippin' leg. I didn't break, break your leg. Sparky dead. Ginger dead! Exactly. I didn't break your leg. Urgh. My point is, the leg wouldn't be broken if it weren't for you. Bring me the ingredients. I'll bring it, alright. Good. Brownie's nervous, but it's not like Patches can do much with that collar on. Or can I? Hey, dog. I mean, Doug. First off, let's recognize you. How's the literature called doing? Plenty of reading, I presume. Or have you been using your exposed brain as an excuse to slack off in club activities? Doug snaps out of his fake stupor. How'd you know about the literature club and my name? I guess. Whoa, that's kind of a neat trick. How'd you guess? I mean, what school doesn't have a literature club? And what club doesn't have a vice president? And a smart dog looking a smart looking dog like you must be a member of such a club. <laughs> Guess it all checks out. Ask for chocolate. Why would a moronic zombie have any chocolate? Doug's eyes dart around nervously. Chocolate? So you want the delicious rush of it, huh? A few bites won't hurt a big dog like me, but I think even a crumb would kill someone your size. No worries, it's for a dear friend of mine. Alrighty then, I'll give you some if you bake my cake for me. Why do you hate cats so much you can't even bear the thought of baking a cake with one? Now I'm just lazy as heck. Fair. The ingredients are on the counter. With that cat named Whiskers. Anyone but him. Have fun. Doug carelessly munches on chocolate. What's up, Angel? Need help with anything? Secret ingredient. Wouldn't happen to have any rat poison, garlic, or chocolate, would you? No, why do you ask? Pranks. Just wanted to pull a little prank. Nothing too dire. You're so cute and devious. Personally, I'd stay away from that kind of stuff. Good luck on your hunt, though. Need any help with anything? So, the brain dead pug over there is your partner? Ugh, yeah, I sent him over there to get ingredients, but all he's doing is standing and staring at the wall. I'd reprimand him, but I can't even bear being within talking distance. This stinks so bad. This grumbles. As much as I hate to ask, could I be your partner instead? You do that? I mean, it sounds great, but what about your other partner? The annoying corgi. There's a certain ingredient I'd like to get before I start working on our cake. Baking with you will be a nice intermission of sorts. Alrighty then. I'll be waiting here for the ingredients. Maybe we can make a salmon cake since we're both cats. Ugh, salmon. I mean, sounds great. Extra ingredients, extra ingredients. Here you go. Great! Whisk whisks together the ingredients. Batter is poured into a pan, ready to bake. That went smoothly. Thanks for helping me. It's so much nicer working with a cat than a dog. Dogs honestly scare the hell out of me. Yeah, they suck, don't they? It would be a shame if you were somehow swindled into having a dog as a partner, hmm? Absolutely. I was kind of against the uh, whole communal thing, but it seems just like it's a lost cause. To let you in on a secret, though, Mitt and I are just kind of here to see the dogs make total fools of themselves one last time before they all rot to death. Seeing Coco scrambling to save them is just a bit of a bonus. You're an asshole for stupid reasons. But I guess I'll support anything that results in more bloodshed. Uh, thanks? Let's hope by the end of the day we're the last one standing. Actually, if I had it my way, none of us would be standing. Bakes Doug and Whisk's cake. Wait, 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 wait. No, sorry. 
it's not quite done. No problem, I'll be right here whenever you need me. I have to give it to Doug. I might be having a stroke. That might also explain why I'm holding, I see you holding a baked cake. Hand him the cake. Oh, you did bake it. My payment, here you go. Time to do business for you. Tell your friends not to eat it all in one place. Now then, time to try out this cake. Doug starts devouring the cake. Hey! What the hell? You didn't even help bake the cake and now you're eating it? Arf! Drop it! Now! Doug slowly takes one more bite. Yes. I'll make certain you rot to death where you stand, you filthy mutt. Hmm. Why don't you just use your magic and bake another cake? That wouldn't be fair. Heh. <laughs> you can't use magic, can you? What a ridiculous notion. I'm a magic cat. I even have a wand. I just reserve my magic for dire situations. Oh, then you'd use it if a rabid dog were suddenly try to try and bite you? Doug lost lunges at Whiskers. But doesn't really. Looks like he's just pretending. Whiskers runs out of the classroom. Yikes. Doug keeps munching on cake. I'll consider washing my paws once there's blood on them. Don't even listen to that crazy dog. Wouldn't be in this entire magic club if I couldn't use magic, right? Are you trying to convince me of that or yourself? I can't use magic. It's not like I wanted to lie about it. My family dragged me into this. So that whole thing about using magic in the classroom because it'd be unfair, I just can't dishonor the Wiccan family name. I meant really, work really hard to conceal the fact that I'm magicless. I don't let anyone down. I'm really not no better than the dog, aren't I? Whisk, are you okay? I saw you storm out. I'm fine. I was just, uh... Life of Whiskers. He was flustered because I told him he had a nice tail. Yeah, I'm very flustered. I think I'll head back to class now. Thanks, Angel. Whisk heads back into class. I don't believe that for a second. Honestly, it hurts my soul to even, say, to even have to say that. Usually I'm not a fan of liars, but I do appreciate your help in my brother's safe face. Mitt pulls out a wand. Patches color feels lighter. Consider that your reward. Thanks. Head back into the class, Patches follows. I know I already took the chocolate, but uh... Damn, I can't talk to her after that. That's a shame. I guess I won't be making her happy, because I don't think I can make her happy after that. Oh well. Don't have anything to bake. Why not? Give me my ingredients. I don't have anything to bake. I sh Oh yeah, I gotta bake it with... Did you get the stuff yet? Leave Brownie alone. Not yet, just wanted to say hi to my favorite dog in the world. I just waves at a random dog. Brownie isn't confused. Here's the trash for your filthy baking cake. Great! Brownie mixes up the batter and pours into the cake pan. Cake is ready to be baked. Now bake it, slave! Do not call me that. You're right. I should wait until you're on a chain again. Then it'll be really funny. You're into some pretty weird stuff. What? No, I was just a joke about how you're under our control this time. Pervert. Patches waltzes away before Brownie can finish. Break the cake. Point is at another some other day. Patches bakes the bacon cake. Patches hands Brownie the finished cake and puts a little flour on top for decoration. Like it? I found it outside. The cake is ruined. The cake looks awesome! Patches, thanks for doing the heavy lifting. It's been really hard to do this with one broken leg or with some random dog hating cat for a partner. Glass dogs can stick together, huh? I honestly can't even be bothered to tell the difference between cats and dogs. Makes sense since you and Angel were. I mean, it's nice that you don't care who's a dog and who's a cat. Some cats are actually really cool. Brandy looks longingly at Coco. Ugh, stop feeling things around me, huh? You have a thing for Coco, right? What? No! Be so loud, who knows how the class might react if they found out a dog liked a cat. Or how Coco would react. Who wouldn't? I don't even like her. I swear, she's just too loud and full of herself. You're loud and full of yourself. Oh, I know we're perfect for each other. Patches and I... Patches, I know we're not exactly pals, but you know what it's like to like a cat, right? I just don't know what... I don't want to, like, scare her away. 
she's been so stressed about making sure everything goes well. I can't be bothering her with dumb feelings. Please don't tell anyone. Have just shrugs. Thanks for listening to me vent. Can you grab a cocoa so she can grate our cake? Okie dokie. I mean, okay. I guess Olive's rubbing off on him. You're here to bother me or is the cake actually done? Have you talked to Brownie much? Huh? I talked to her at the start of class. You were there. I mean about something other than your precious mission to heal dogs. What's that about? Did she say something? Is something wrong? Is the scent spreading amongst the class? I'm certain the scent is brewing somewhere, but I'm talking about the big crush Brownie has on you. Brownie's a what? The entire class, including Brownie, looks at in Coco and Patches' direction. Patches? Oopsie. Brownie jumps on Patches. You asshole! I told you not to tell anyone! <laughs> Ugh, stop, stop! Tell what? You didn't tell me anything. It's too late. Brownie's trying to choke Patches out. Well, this isn't looking too good. Guess cats and dogs can't really, can't, really can't get along. Want us to get rid of your dog problem, Coco? Ugh, enough! This is a spoon tries to pry Brownie's paw off Patches' neck. You, outside, now. Yeah, Brownie, out. No, not her, you. What? It wasn't like I was the one who assaulted another student. I don't care. It's only first period and you're already wreaking havoc. You think Mint and Whisk will think? They're going to see dogs, bloodthirsty pests, and need to be exterminated. Again, I was not the one who assaulted another student. And seeing dogs as pests to be exterminated, don't you find that a little ironic considering you're lecturing everyone on this? No. I've changed and I'm trying to make up for everything by any means necessary. Coco readies her wand. Maybe you should do the same. Or what, you'll kill me? It really screams I'm a good cat and I'd never hurt anyone else again. I wonder what Olive will think when they saw you, if they saw you right now. Face it, you're a murderer, just like me. That will never change. You sure are getting shocked into silence a lot today. I just want to be a good cat. Ugh. I suppose it wouldn't be very productive of me to criminalize you for something that you want to move on from. So... Sorry. What? Did you just try and make me feel better? In a terribly half- in a terribly half-assed, but still kind of nice way? No, I was just saying what came to mind, as I do. As a lot of people do. I seriously just want to move on. But as much of an asshole to myself, as much- as, But I'm much, such an asshole to myself, it makes it so hard to change my habits. Is that relatable to you at all? No, why would it be? Patches, you need to move on from being a total blood-hungry asshole. But you can't do that unless we allow you to. Or unless somebody believes in you. Coco weighs her wand. Patches' collar doesn't change at all. Your collar? It's already dispelled? Heh. <laughs> it's been like that this entire time. I guess my magic wore off or something. You bastard! I can't believe for a second I thought I could help you. Look, I didn't even do anything. Liar! Never change, you'll always be a killer. Maybe this is how I can make up for the death of these dogs. What, you're gonna kill me? Look away your wand. And Pop patches eye open! The force knocks him over, but he's still very much alive for now. I'm not a killer anymore. But the least I can do is make you suffer for the rest of your short zombie life. Whoa! That was kind of not called for. I was just trying to be nice! God damn! Alright, I'll be back. So, sadly, to make sure she doesn't fucking kill me, I think I just have to return to class. As much as I want to make everybody love me, I just gotta fucking take it one for the team. And he fumbles with the eggs. Ugh. Half acts, especially the cats. This is hard when I'm on a crutch, okay? What are you doing? I'm trying to show off what an adorably non lethal dog I am. Careful, Angel. She might try to maw you to death again. Urgh. I mean, it's not like he didn't deserve that he deserved it or something. Someone needs to take you behind his shed. I just love the old yeller comment that this fucking cat throws around like it's just normal. Shut up, Whiskers. You! No, shut up. Sit down. Hmm. Whiskers, Whisk returns to his counter. You too, Brownie. Okay. Cake's done, ready to be graded. Had to 
bother me or your cake actually done? Yes, cake's actually done. To the class and the dogs, cat, the kid along. I hate Coco. Coco immediately pulls out a clipboard and begins writing sluggishly. She looks emotionally exhausted. Good work, you pass. Uh, do you want to try it? I'm alright, I'm a bit busy. Uh, Coco about... We can talk about this later, Brownie. I'm just kind of overwhelmed right now. Well, I think that went well. At least I can drown my sorrows in cake. She digs in. Oh, I'm so good! Bell rings, marking the end of the first period. Good luck with everything, Angel. Thanks for everything, Angel. See you at lunch. Hope the pal enjoys the treat. Come with extra patches. Off I go. So, uh, Coco, I'm really sorry about everything. I know you're already stressed. I'm just sorry, Brownie. Better prep for the next class. Ugh. Maybe it can be worse. I feel really bad because I think they fall in love. That sucks. All right, before I go to literature, I have a question. If we go to Patch's Locker and not grab the knife, but we look at the old letters for Patch's, we read too many books on dis dissection and the small animal anatomy and you joke about brutally murdering me if I ever left you. It's not funny. Wow. I really want Patches to be the really, really happy one. If I can't get everyone, I need Patches to be the one. Literature. Ten class. Patches! All jumps onto Patches. I'm so happy they're here. Remember when I met you in the library for the first time? How could I forget? You wouldn't stop talking about eating books and holding paws. It's pretty safe to say that that was the most awkward moment of my life. I can't believe you remember. It makes me so happy. Today's going to be such a good day. Anyway, nice dog Luna is helping start the class. Let's go. The entire class is here now. Olive? Uh, is the entire class here, Olive? I don't know. We kind of just let everyone choose which classes they go to and when, except Patches. Huh? Patches? I mean, Angel. It's a cute little cat. Say hi, Angel. Hi. Ugh. I see. Total anarchy. I suppose I can work with this. First things first, attendance. Today's a free for all. Why do we need attendance? Your routine keeps your mind sharp. And I also must ensure that I have a record of which literature club members attend the weekly meetup. I already know Doug isn't here. Holly, please. Holly shuts up. Ahem. Doug? Absent. Holly? Present. Patches? Present. Olive? Present! Luna? Present. Since when it was Olive a member of the club? Holly down. I'd like to welcome our newest member of the literature club, Olive! Boy! Luna claps. Angel lightly taps his broken arm. Holly doesn't clap at all. Oh, can Angel join too? Uh, well, Sparky did say today was about establishing camaraderie between cats and dogs. Also mentioned that our lives depended on it. Welcoming a cat into the club would be a great step in the right direction. Everyone, welcome our newest member of the literature club, Angel! Luna and Olive clap enthusiastically. Angel and Holly do not. Now then, Vice President Patches, what was this period going to consist of? Everyone must know. Oh, it's a quiet reading period. There are books on the shelves for you to read. Well done, you seem a little more shy than usual. No matter. Everyone pick a book to read and feel free to chat amongst yourselves. Students so begin picking up their books from the shelves. Cats seem to stay with cats. Dogs with dogs. Literary library door swings open. Ah, I'm late. Oh dear. Whiskers and Mitt will be so upset with me. The school's layout is just so confusing and everything smells like dog. Oh, a new cat friend. Ah, dog. It's okay, it's okay. I'll slowly approach Felix and lowers their voice. Here, I'll show you a nice quiet place you can read. Follow me. All bleeds Felix, Felix to another area of the library. Everyone else grabs a book and begins reading. There's gotta be havoc to read. There's a lot, and there's gotta be havoc to read here. Patches 
drop on Lunar Conversational Angel. It's amazing that you made it out on Skate, Patches, and then enlisted to help a bunch of cats to heal us. I would have never expected this of you. It wasn't really my idea. It's all thanks to a cat named Coco. She really wanted to make up for... I mean, she really wanted to help us out, out of empathy. Cat wanted to do something out of the kindness of their heart. I'm already warming up to the idea of working with cats. For too long, I held our prejudices. I'm certain both societies would benefit if we all worked together. Oh, you're a very open-minded dog, Luna. I try to be. Thank you. You, on the other hand, I heard you were open to cats from the start. Angel finally notices Patches eavesdropping. Uh, oh dear, I didn't mean to say it in any judgmental tone. It's just there were a lot of moves that rumors that you were, uh, liked cats a lot. I don't care what you, who you like, though. In fact, I find it inevitable. Or inviable. That you came to such a conclusion that cats were equals, no matter better or worse, and were able to seek a relationship as a result. Look away. Patch looks away. I'm so sorry, I must be saying all the wrong things right now. No, not at all. You're actually being very kind. I just wasn't expecting it. Oh, phew, that's great to hear. I'm gonna pick out a book now. I told Oliver to read with them. Sounds good. See you later. I have an idea that spawned from me accidentally noticing that patches will move if you if you stare at him. If I get him here and I talk to her, hello there, Angel. Is there any way I can help you feel at home with this school of dogs? I'm sure it must be pretty jarring for you. Talk about patches. It's not patches character. I can't help but feel as though there's something off about him. I'm very perceptive. Blue Patch has been lying about his true identity all along. Really? I mean... Cover for Angel. As much as I'd love to throw him under the literal bus and tell you that he's indeed an imposter, Patches is definitely a dog. No one can mistake that. Well, of course he is. I just believe that all my years of knowing him have been really paying off more arrogant, painting him as more arrogant and selfish than he really is. Oh, I hate to ask, but do you hate dogs? I only ask because you talk about Patches with such contempt. I don't hate him more than I hate myself. Well, that's good. Best be on my way, a lot of reading to do. Talk to you later. Angel's looking at some random books. Why? I just looks away. Angel continue flipping through the Paul Cthulhu. Alright then. Hello there, Angel. Is there anything I can do to help you feel more at home with magic books? Good non-fiction books about magic? You know, the sort of magic that might start an apocalypse or soft between bodies? Just some cat literature to make me feel at home. Let's see. Literature geared towards felines and fortunately be cleaned out of the library. Because I'm a corporate reader, I believe in uh, literature of knowledge. I have a secret band book collection. Not even the vice president of the literature government knows about it. Why well, keep secrets? Oh, well, Patch has never given me much incentive to be completely transparent with him. Actually, I kind of felt as though he'd try to sabotage me here at any opportunity. I can easily have my position revoked if anyone found out I've been holding illegal literature. But maybe you're right. Patch has become a lot more trustworthy as of late. I'll try to keep less secrets from him from now on. Thanks for reminding me of our morals and to keep my morals in check. It was surprisingly nice to talk to you until I hardly said a thing. Look, can you just tell me where the magic cat books are? For educational purposes, of course. No can do. Hi, dear information. Why go through the trouble of mentioning this collection at all if you're not going to tell me about it? I thought you were just wanting to know if cat books existed feel more at home. Huh. Sorry, I can't be more helpful. Secret stash is a secret stash. Happy reading, though. Holly stares at an empty tabletop. What? Don't know how to read? What? Don't know how to mind your own business? Go read like Patches told us to or I'll maul you to death. He, Holly growls. Magic books. Just want to know where I can find some feline reading material of a cult variety. Luna told me she had a collection somewhere in the library. She told you that? That's well, supposed to be a secret. So you know where it is. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Why should I tell you? Offer to help. Maybe we can come to an agreement here. You tell me where Luna's collection is and I'll help you with whatever you need. I guess today is supposed to be about a collaboration between cats and dogs. Probably she choose the art of war and I'll tell you where it is. There it is, she choose the art of war. Careful, Holly. Your power complex is showing. Wow, you actually got the book. Patch throws the book on the table closed. Gee, thanks. My payment? Books are hidden in the podium underneath the globe. I saw Luna hiding her cat girl comics under, under 
her giggling to herself like she was some kind of genius. When she saw me staring, she begged me not to tell anyone. If she asked, you sniffed them out. I mean, cats do that, right? I wouldn't know, weirdo. Just so that I can get a good run on this. Be sympathetic. Sucks, suck. Sure does. Today goes well, maybe I'll get my arms back, so I'll be on my best behavior. So that, threatening them all a cat, correct? I didn't threaten you because you were a cat, I threatened you because you were an asshole. I'm sure you can see the difference anyway. You can't see the difference anyway. I'm not trying to piss him off. You know what? Fuck it. Since I'm already down this. Anyone ask him, don't you use a restroom? Sure, patches. Use the library. basically killing me. I want to see if we can get him to talk. If I have to have the book to do it, I'm going to try, but let's see what happens. Soft footsteps can be heard in the distance. Someone's here. It might be a good idea to have a weapon on Paul if you intend on using it. I don't intend on using it. So, go down the hall. Patch just follows the sound of Paul pads through the labyrinth of the hallways. Angel's wandering aimlessly, unaware that he's being watched. The crunch of a stray bone under his paw gives Patches away. Patches! What are you doing here? Why are you following me? Closer. I don't really know. I just wanted to talk. I don't owe you anything. You should leave right now. Look, I know I've been a little unstable around you. Leave! You killed me, stole my body, then tried to kill my friends. And when they forgave you what? and let you come here, you were snarky and ungrateful. I just want to escape you, but I can't. Every time I look in the mirror, I see you. I'm so sick of it. You hate me that much, huh? Yes. Let me get my body out. I'll leave you alone forever. How's that? You? Get your body back? Angel laughs quietly to himself. That's not going to happen. It's much easier to keep you in check in the body you have now. If you miss your old body that much, as much as I miss mine, I'm glad to keep you from it. I think everyone agrees that I make a better patches anyway. Is that so? Fine. I was half expecting you to attack me just then. At least try to. And then be stopped by your collar? Oh, this whole thing? Mittens dispelled it for me in home ec class. There's nothing stopping me from attacking you. Except for the fact I have no knife. But I'll accept things that that things are over between us. I shouldn't I should have just accepted it the first time you told me. Patches walks back to the main area of the school, leaving Angel behind in silence. Hmm. Angel really did a number on the bathroom, didn't she? Good old blood sports. Anything new with the locker? And back to class we go. I'm sure Angel will be back later. Maybe, just maybe, I just did a good thing. Hopefully. Hi, Patchy. Sorry I left you alone back there. I just had to make sure Little Felix here was good and comfy. First off, don't call me Patchy. Secondly, I hate how you just throw yourself at any living thing, especially when it's so obvious when they so obviously hate dogs. Maybe we can show Felix how nice dogs can be. Uh-huh. Why don't you pick out a book and come read with me until class ends? Felix doesn't like the feel of the beanbag chair on his skin, so maybe we can use it. You know, snuggle up real close. We can fit on it together. You really have a one-trick mind, don't you, Olive? Let me find a book. Perhaps Mass Murder Manual or something like that? Are you ready to read? Yep. Found the perfect book, actually. Wow, it looks really spooky. Now we just need to wait for Angel. Angel's joining us? Yeah, did I forget to say that? Olive? Patches? 
There you are. The three of us are gonna read together. I suppose that's fine. Oh my god, it changed his mind. We're sitting in the middle, though. Wowie! Oath flops down in the middle of the beanbag chair. Angel and Patches sit on either side. You two friends again? What? Uh, we're not friends. Maybe one day, we're definitely not going to be that kind of friends. Huh? What kind of friends? The friends who murder each other and steal each other's bodies all of... Oh, that kind. Well, it sounds like you'll be happier. Let's hope so. Olive and Angel crack open their books. Buddy and the Chocolate Factory and Pugs the Prejudice. Pugs and Prejudice. Meanwhile, Patches begins reading the translated segments of the grimoire. Hey! Olive and Angel are super happy. Hey! Marking the end of second period. Sure hope you like the book, Angel. Thanks for the book. Screw you for not opening it for me. Thank you for allowing me to host Literature Club. Man, it sucks that I wasn't able to get the perfect ending. I don't think I'll be able to get the perfect ending, I mean. That was a great class. I suppose it could have been worse. Hey, Patches. Thanks for behaving. I'm sorry I underestimated you. It appears you're capable of changing after all. Ugh, your genuine words make me sick. But I will accept the compliment nonetheless. Aw, love hops around happily. This is the best day ever. Oh my dog, it's lunchtime. It's the best time of the day. Let's go. All right. It's lunchtime. I have the grimoire. They're locking the door to the library. Olive scampers off yelling, snack, 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 snacks. Angel follows while politely asking Olive to quiet down. Better follow him. Let's go for lunch. Appears everyone is occupied by food and conversation. All have likely found a seat with their moronic friends. No matter, for a short period, I've spent gathering the ingredients for the perfect apocalypse. Hey, Patches, buy and lunch. Bronnie! Bronnie actually got to be lunch lady. Buying with money? Perhaps you could spot me a meal after all. We are friends. I can hear the air quotes around friends. We're not friends. I can give you a free cupcake, fresh bake from home at class, though. I'd rather starve. talk with Olive. Sorry I ran ahead of you, I was just so hungry. Oh, Olive, you wound me. I have abandonment issues. I might just crack and murder someone. Oh, Patches, I care about you lots. I never abandon you. Here. Olive gives Patches a single coin. I bought some, I brought some lunch money, but Coco packed me a surprise lunch for helping her set up today. You should spend it on something nice. I'll be sure to spend it all in one place. Come sit me with me, with me when you have your lunch. Olive continues digging into their food. Let's see. First things first. Any machine for cheap jog treats. How convenient. Alas, physical body needs sustenance. Purchase a generic can of dog food, which is all of his coin. Follows a lot of clunk. Let's see what we have here. Reaches in the vending machine, pulls out a bloody rotting skull. Well, this is not what I ordered. Reaches into the back and pulls out a, can a generic can of dog food. Now this is more like it. Dog must have had their head skinned and thrown inside the vending machine. Treat indeed. Trash can. In the trash cans are some crumpled up cupcake wrappers and dirty napkins. Gross. Okay, first things first. Perfect apocalypse it is. Crystal ball no mittens. Can I borrow this? You mean the priceless crystal ball that's been a prized possession of the Wiccan family for generations? Yes, that one. Don't make me turn you inside out, Angel. Looks like stealing is in order. First things first. So there's the cafeteria food specially. Do you think it's real fish? It looks too good to be real fish. It's probably made of cats. Ah! It's a good thing Mittens lent me some luxury dog food. I just wish I had fish, though. Trade lunch for want. I have a can of fish eyes right here. It's been labeled, there's no need of suspicious legitimacy. Fish eyes? I love fish eyes. You could have it if you give me something to return. Perhaps your magic wand? I, could, I couldn't. My parents would could, could, could ground me. Patches begins opening the generic can of salty fish eyes. It stinks. Patches is doing a great job of not looking like he wants to barf. Okay, okay, you can borrow my wand for the rest of the day. Felix gives Patches the wand and immediately snatches the can of food. Oh dear, Bopamet, thou hast blessed me. 
have this too, I have no need for such gruel, patches of luxury dog food, and then proceeds to messily eat the can of fish eyes. Gross. Okay. Before I finish this period out. Hey, Patches. Jinga looks exhausted. Wow, you look like you're possessed by an evil spirit. Good one. Just drain, trying to keep all these dogs together while helping Sparky supervise the gym. Just keep running around a bit. Stitches. On the bright side, it's easy for me to focus on magic when part of Sparky is talking about Ultimate Frisbee. He has a very soothing voice. Distract Ginger. Hey, Ginger, your family name's Claire, right? Yeah, why do you ask? Plus, the grimoire fits the page of the biography section. Take a look for yourself. Ginger lazily scans through the pages that contain the biographies of bloodhounds and Siamese cats with generations of growth and go. Patches tugs at Ginger's fur in an attempt to pull out a piece of fur. She absentmindedly pats Patches on the head. You're always hungry for attention. It's endearing. She seems completely oblivious to what you just tried to do. Ginger's attention returns to the grimoire. She suddenly jumps. Magic stitches loosen on the zombies surrounding her. Wiccan, isn't that... Hey, dog, what gives? Ginger is supposed to be holding the zombies together so we can accurately test the canine-feline relations. I just... Oh my dog, I never knew my family. Having an existential crisis, I presume? Hmm? It's us. Mintz notices the grimoire. They begin flipping through it while Ginger explains herself to Whisk in a panic. Their eyes widen as they begin to read the contents. Patches slips away while everyone is distracted. Okay, magic ball. Take this ball and then Whisk distracted. Hi, I was just... Whoa, cool ball be wicked to shoot hoops with. Yes, wicked. Just another jock with two brain cells. You've got everything you need to start the perfect apocalypse. Angel waves hello to Patches. He's eating a hefty pile of raw meat. Hi, Patches. All's not full of food. Repugnant sight. You ready to eat lunch together? Yes. Sure am. Presents a yum yum puppy food. Whoa, yum yum puppy food. I love their bacon bits. Share with Olive. You want some? You would share? Oh my gosh, you're wonderful, Patches. You were technically the one who paid for it. I'll just eat whatever you have left over. You're a growing kitty, after all. I mean, dog. Let's eat. Patches shares his lunch with Olive. Olive is super happy. Bell rings make, marking the end of lunch. Chapter 5, Jim. Back to the library for me. It's a good last period, Patches. Olive gives Patches a big hug. He learned better than to fight back at this point. Just wanted to know that I'm super proud of you for being such a good boy today. See you at the assembly. We can sit together. Oh boy, more quality Olive time. You should get to class before you're late. Bye! Olive runs off to supervise the next period of the library. But he's been productive. I have everything I need to start the apocalypse. All that's left is a piece of ginger's fur so I can get my body back. Let's see. Ten class. A bunch of cats and dogs are bickering down the field. I'm putting my paw down, Tigger. I'm the team captain, so is Ginger. This is insane. Both team captains are dogs. This doesn't really sound like a cat and dog day to me. I'm actually kind of tired. But we're not both captains because we're both dogs. Coco put us in charge and she's a cat. Why should it even matter if we're both dogs anyway? What? It totally matters. All dogs think they're physically stronger than cats. We need a chance to prove ourselves. Um, I think I should just focus on... If you want to do today right, you gotta let me show off my... Tigger snatches a baseball from the ground and flexes. Athletic prowess! She pitches the ball. It flies and flies until it dissipates, presumably into the sun. Help Ginger speak. Stop interrupting Ginger, you filthy animals. Thank you. Sparky, I'm feeling completely exhausted. It'd be great to just take the rest of my the rest of this period off. Oh, why didn't you say so? Feel free to do whatever you need. I'll catch you up to speed after school. Thank you. Before you go, Ginger runs off. Bam! No Ginger! No team captain! Guess you'll need a replacement, huh, Sparky boy? Tigger flexes her pecs. Flexes her pecs. Okay, you can be the team captain. Sweet. But captain, she's just gonna disrespect your authority! Aw, oh, Rover. There's no authority here. It's a friendly game of baseball. You're on my team, Pipsqueak. Ah, what? Sparky boy says we gotta mix up ta teams of cats and dogs. Which, I'll put you, put 
I'll put up with just because it'll be sweet when I crush him, dragging your dead weight. No, please, Captain, don't make me. It's a learning experience, however, you'll do fine. Well, it looks like he's about to contest. Instead, bows his head and joins his captain. Bows his head down to his captain, walks towards what will surely be his demise. In that case, Angel, you're on my team, since you're captain all. Sparky elbows in the ridge, last knowingly. Sparky and Tigger turn, take turns choosing teammates, alternating between cats and dogs, and teams are even as possible. Sparky is the team captain, of course. Sparky is the captain of home team, and Tigger is captain of the away team. Alright, we're all set. Let's play ball! Well, actually, we're gonna take a few minutes to get to know our teammates. Friendship makes the team stronger. Tigger and many other classmates grown audibly. Whatever, you'll lose to me either way. Friendship break? I suppose it's a perfect time to distract. Nope. We're not gonna be able to ditch the class until afterwards. But. Hey, little man. Looks like you're with the Husky for the day, huh? Well, no matter what team you're on, you're on. You're a cat. Show off how strong a cat can be. If you need anything, I'll be here, little bro. Aren't you a tiger? It's actually pronounced Tigger. No. Tiger is a massive striped cat from the islands and rainforests. You seriously never seen one? Or maybe you see one every time you look in the mirror. Huh? Big cats? What? Tigers? Huh? Tigger is processing what Patches just told her. Never mind. Actually, it appears I'm mistaken. Definitely all cat. But how will I know for sure? Uh, how should I know? Tigger looks like she's on the verge of tears. Do you have two pointy ears? Yeah. Do you have a long tail? Yeah. Do you love savory salmon snack packs? I love those! Done, you're a cat. Wow. Good to hear. Wouldn't want to feel signaled out or singled out from all the other cats. Oh no, you don't stand out at all. Brown paper bag, labeled Tigger or something. Eh. Patrick reaches for the lunch bag. Tigger isn't watching. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Little man, what do you think you're doing? Uh, if you wanted a bite of my mid-game fuel, you could have just asked. Tigger reaches in the lunch bag and pulls out a scruffy looking hamster. Man, we just finished up lunch, but I'm still pretty hungry. You want the head or the butt? Uh, you know what? I'll hold back. You're looking at this thing like a piece of meat. I can't stand in the way of a fellow cat and its prey. Tigger gives the patches the hamster. Don't eat it all in one place now. Okay, I still don't know what to do with the hamster. Patches holds the hamster for a bit. It's kind of fat. It bites him. Cute. Hey, little man. Holler if you need anything. Help distract Sparky. Actually, there's something you could help me with. Most odds, Sparky won't let me... Uh, leave the field to visit my friend. What? I'll wreck him for you, little man. Tigger rolls up her non-existent sleeves. No need for that. Honestly, I'd like to do the wrecking myself. If you really like to help, a simple distraction would do wonders. Distraction, huh? What kind of distraction are you looking for? Quiet and fair. Just something simple, not too gaudy. Well, I guess if that's a quiet distraction, everyone will be able to focus on my muscles a little better. Why don't you just hit a home run? Huh? You know, bat the ball out of orbit? While everyone's in total awe, you can run off and meet your little friend. Why do you want me to get a home run? I'm the only opposing team. Dude, we're on the same team. Cat pride. You can't do it. You can do anything you want. If you know every cat in Kimono Woods is rooting for you. I find that hard to believe. Aw. You talk like you never had a team backing you up. No worries, little man. You got my support. Go get some other animals to, ha to hype you up too. I swear, it's a huge difference. Now, go get a home run. Ugh. Get away! No Friday realization with the enemy. Rover, it's a friendly game. Be nice. Yes, Captain. Howdy. Uh, call me Angel, I suppose. Howdy, Angel. So, you want something? Firstly, your number. Wait, you're Rover. I think I've seen your name and number in about every bathroom in school. Heck yeah! Did seeing him make you want to call? Without a doubt. I felt the uncontrollable urge to call a number and have its owner meet at a remote location with no witness. Whoa, that'd be awesome! Fun to play, so fun to play ball in wilderness. Play ball? Yeah, what else? Just thought you put your number up for overlooks completely oblivious. Never mind. Bathroom wall sounds like a perfect place to meet new jock friends. Alright, hold on. We have another option with you now. 
want a home run. Any tips for getting a home run? Oh, oh, oh! You want to choke up on the bat, make eye contact with the pitcher, and swing through your hips. I have no idea what any of that meant, that means, but thanks. It's pretty complicated, but you can get good at anything if you do it a hundred times. Let me guess, you learned all this from Sparky? Sure I did! There is a super awesome, super secret way to get a home run, though. I might tell you if you bring me something I can play with while I'm here at the game to start. What could you possibly want? Something cool! Cool? Isn't that a little ambiguous? Ambigu ambiguous? What does that mean? Never mind. Well, good luck! You're the hamster! Oh, it's you again. Patch's, ha Patch's hamster bites him. Ow! Throws the hamster. Rover catches it swiftly. Oh, dog, it's a killer rat! No, you s this stupid rodent is actually a hamster. Or I think it is. It could just easily be a hairy gremlin. Huh, it's actually pretty cool. Cool, you say? I suppose I inadvertently helped my end of the deal? Oh, right! The secret to giving a home run is confidence! Of course it is. I find getting lots of compliments really helps. I'll show you. I like your fur coat. Your eye patch is cool, and your personality is kind of hot and cold, but I think it makes you rad to talk to. Huh? I suddenly feel great. Like you've triggered my fight or flight response. I'm not sure what that means, but if you can fight and fly, I bet you can hit a home run too. Um, thanks. Wait. Maybe now we can actually hit a home run, which actually would be great right about now. Aren't you excited to run around, throw stuff, catch stuff? I'm shaking uncontrollably with excitement. That's great. You should really join the sports team. We play sports after school every day. Sports team, huh? Sounds terribly unorganized and vague. Or terribly organized and vague. Just choose one sport and stick with it. You can't restrict to one sport. It'd be unfair to all the other sports. Anyway, enough about that. How's it going? Do you need anything? Let's start the game. Time to play ball. Help batter. Love that confidence. Usually the away team would bat first, but maybe we can make an exception here. Whatever it takes to get a home run. Oh, a home run? What, you don't believe I can get one? Oh, I believe you can get one. I just hope it's for the right reasons. This game is supposed to be about having fun and making friends. You're aiming to excel, and just make sure it's for you. Oh, it's for me, all right. You need to escape your insufferable presence, that is. Great! It's great seeing you so passionate about something that isn't your other hobbies. I know you do great patches. I know I'll do great too. This has to be the home run run. Sparky explains the rules to all the students in their positions. Patches is batting. Tigger is in the catcher's box. Sparky stands on the patcher's mound. Pitcher's mound. You can do it, little man. Ugh. Sparky pitches the ball. Patches swings as hard as he can. He misses the ball. Tigger manages to catch it. Oh, come on. Ugh. It's all right, little man. You're doing your best. Pitches the ball again and again. Patches can't seem to hit. Damn it. Three strikes, you're out. I hate this. Oh, shoot. Oh, patch it. Shut up, I don't need your toxic positivity. No, I wasn't going to. Look, it sucks to fail at anything. I mean, losing gets best of all the time. All the other dogs worry and you get feelings hurt. Now I realize sometimes you make mistakes and it's frustrating and it feels the world set you up to steal a wand, almost commit murder, and some misunderstood dogs. It's uh, really, really specific. Almost well, specific. And you can't really forgive yourself, but that's when your friends step in and help you out. Sparky hugs Patches really hard. It's okay to feel bad. Move on whenever you're ready. Thanks. No problem. Everybody cheers Patches on. Sparky and Tigger are super happy. Wow, that was really wholesome. I think I got, a, I got you all wrong, Sparky. Your muscles aren't on the outside, they're on the inside. Thanks. Screw winning and losing. I just want to throw a ball and run around with some cool cats and dogs. Yeah! Whoopee. Let's get on with the rest of the game. The game continues without incident. That was a close game. So, can I leave now? Did you have fun making new friends? Sure. Go ahead. Just make sure you're on your back before the, the bell rings. Assembly's about to happen further down the field. See you, Angel. Great work out there today. Bye! barrier, slips past the caution tape, footprints in the dry blood leads to Janady, that must be Ginger. Good idea to have a weapon on Paul, it is if you plan on using it. No, Jim. Ginger's sitting cross-legged in the middle of the room. She almost looks asleep. 
Move! Ah! No, I need to focus. One, two, three. One, two, three. Patches, I'm sorry it's difficult to focus on holding the dogs together and talk to you at the same time. They're just so rambunctious. If only we were doing yoga instead of baseball. That's too bad. I can see why you came to this spot to focus then. Far away from crying eyes. Completely isolated. Please, Patches. We're so close to saving everyone. Talk to her. <laughs> what, did you think I was going to kill you? Yes. I just wanted to check up on you. Maybe it was a little validating to scare you too. Oh, thank dog. I'm exhausted, but I'll be fine. Thanks for, for checking. How are you? Are you okay, Patches? Why wouldn't I be? You seem so conflicted. I care about you as a friend, of course. I know how hard it can be to change and let people in, but my new friends are actually really nice and never imagined my life could end up this way. It's always, I thought I'd die young. Now I see a future full of happy cats and dogs. Sorry, I'm making this about my- I'm talking about myself a lot. I guess it'd be interesting to, you know, to know if my experience resonated with you at all. Change. I don't like this. It's okay, we don't have to talk about your feelings, yet we're at all. I just wanted to check up on you. Uh-huh. Thanks, Ginger. I'm glad you're doing well, too. Good luck keeping things together. I'd better get going or I'll miss the assembly. My patches, I'm gonna stay here and focus. Ginger closes her eyes and meditates again. It'd be a good time to get that fur, you just need a knife to cut it off with. Now it's locker time. For the greater good, it's locker time! Take knife. To the gym. Ginger's meditating. Patches silent, cuts away, piece of Ginger's fur. Now it's time to go to the grand finale. Runs off to the assembly location of the field. End of the day! Bell rings marking the end of the school day. Everyone gathers in the field in front of Coco and Mittens. Patches, oh my gosh, I missed you! It really has been eons, hasn't it? I was a little worried. Ginger looked so tired. I wasn't sure if she was going to make it. But it looks like everything's okay. I think the cats and dogs got along pretty well, too. Sure did. Room quiet. Ahem. Mittens? Hello, everyone. As you know, there's an experiment to see what they would look like if cats and dogs lived and worked, learned side by side. An experiment all canines' lives depend on, but I'm beginning to think that shouldn't be the case. What? You promised to heal them. What I meant was, our lives and bodies shouldn't have to depend on me or this experiment or school day. They're yours. I'm just here to give them back. That's more like it. Whoopee! Did you hear that, Patches? Wait, do dogs really win you over that much? I just think I owe more of my status to the dogs than I thought, and I think I might have a bit of a dog complex. But I'll deal with the guilt when I get the opportunity to apologize to Ginger. Anyway, let's make things right, shall we? Mittens rummage around the dog and around their bag. Looking for this? Patches pulls out the stolen crystal ball. With a wave of Felix's wand, the ball glows brightly and bursts into pink flames. Skeletal arm reaches out and grips the sacrificial skull and places it in the maw of Bopamet! Another worldly being breaks into breaks out of the flames the crystal ball. The field shakes under its weight. The being twitches its head toward Patches. No, this is my family power. What are you doing with it? Patches presents Ginger's tuft of fur to the being. Well, my body back. The being snaps the fur out of Patches' paw. Its head creeps toward and turns to Angel. Ah, wait! Angel feels his soul being ripped from his body. He screams into nothingness. Patches feels similar sensation when everything moves dark. Patches gasps for his breath. Patches! <laughs> it's me again, and oh boy, do I ever feel alive. What are you doing? What's best? It's my body, Olive. It belongs to me. But you're scaring everyone. You're scaring me. I don't know why you're doing this. We can talk. I'll listen to us for as long as it takes. All looks at Patches pleadingly. Bobbinet leans in to hear Patches' next request. Ugh, just put him back together. The being pauses, stands up straight with unnatural jittery movements, as you wish. The entire field rumbles. Ah! Huh? Is it all a dream? My battle scar! It's gone! Patchy! 
I'll hug's patches so hard his ribs might break. He pats him softly on the back. I was afraid you were going to do what? Hurt my best friend? I'm your best friend? I am not saying it again. Wait, Angel! Holy cats, not again! Oh, uh, please, 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 don't be gone! I can't do this again! Ginger walks in. So, it looks like the healing went well. Angel sits up. He slowly turns his head to look at Patches. You! He lunges at Patches, attempting to tear out his throat with his teeth. Wait, wait, Angel! Get off me! You fucking bastard, I'll kill you! Sparky lifts Angel off Patches. Oh, you're so small now. Sparky, Patches stole his body back. We have to stop. No, Angel, look. Look around you. Look at all the doggies. Angel looks around and sees that all the dogs have been healed. Looks down at his own body. He sees his cat again. Completely healed as well. Huh? You have a lot of explaining to do, Patches. I think Widow Patchy is a big softie now. Huh, Patchy boy? Decided you wanted to go get after school milkshakes with the cool kids after all? Second thought, just let Angel kill me. Ahem. Can somebody t please explain to me what's going on? The other cats and dogs in the field are similarly confused. Roku tells them a lengthy story about how Patches and Angel swapped bodies, how she killed nearly every dog in Hijiko High, and how they were resurrected, they resurrected a zombie army, etc. By the end of the story, all the students are zoning out and chatting amongst themselves. Well then, that was the most eventful day of school I've ever had. But let me guess, you thought it was perfect? All of hits Patches. Uh, ow? You scared me so much, Patchy, but I guess I'll forgive you since we're best friends. You'd forgive me? For anything, wouldn't you? I'd give you punchies if you scare me again, though. All of growls softly, it's obvious they mean business. I do not incur your wrath, then. Let's say bye to every I mean everybody, and then walk home together. We can watch cartoons and eat peanut butter. It actually sounds kind of nice. Start from the back. So you're a dog, huh? Is that a problem? No, not at all. Patches rolls his eyes. Olive looks very nervous. Look, I'm very sorry. It must have been annoying talking to me. All I did was insult your entire species and hit on you. For the record, I don't think you're a bad dog or a bad cat. Great, because I live I live for your approval. Oh shit, I didn't mean like maybe we can get to know each other better sometime. That might help convince me your apology is worth accepting at all. I think Met planned on having a magic club visit Hichiko High in the future to study magic with some dogs. Maybe our paths will cross. Perhaps. Well it looks a little rest a little less nervous. Ginger is talking excitedly with Mittens. Hi, Ginger. Hi, Mittens. All of it's so nice to see you. Hi, all. Hello, Patches. So you took a cat's body for a joy ride. Did you get it out of your system? Mm-hmm. Can't say I'd recommend it. What are you two talking about? Mitten and I are going to make a presentation for the principals of our schools. Something that will convince them to allow me to allow some inner school activities. Perhaps they'd even allow us some communal school days like today. I'm just visualizing it. Massive, colorful, trifold, modern examples of cats and dogs working together, as well as ancient examples from the grimoire. And the board in itself will be a creative collaboration between students from both our schools. Oh my dog, that sounds so fun! I have leftover paints from making the banner in our school lobby today. Can I help? Absolutely. Cats and dogs are welcome. With everything, when everything is complete, you should be able to present it to your new family for practice. A new family? It's the Wiccan family. Blood is blood, after all. Wow. My dog. This trifold has to be perfect. I can't have them thinking I'm just some freaky, magical mutt. If it eases your mind, my family is easy to be swayed. It is easily swayed by the magically adept. In fact, after we tell them what you're capable of, I wouldn't be surprised if they respected your opinion more than Wisks. I heard that. I guess that's good to know. Olive hugs Ginger. Don't be worried, Ginger. Your family already likes you. Yes, Whisk and I think you're pretty alright. Aw, can't believe it. If it goes well, I might be able to attend the same school. So, I'm not rid of Angel and Coco for the rest of the time? How disappointing. Olive smacks Patches on the head. It's not very effective. I'm kidding, of course. I'm looking forward to seeing you two tear down the fabric of society from the inside out. 
Let me know if there are any politicians that need to be swayed. Non-violently, of course. I was on board until you said non-violent. Well, keep you in the loop, Patches. Olive hugs Ginger and runs off. Ready to go, Patches? Not yet. Not quite yet. There's a few more people have a chat left. Whoopee, lead the way. Let's head in for back row. Let's talk with these three. Yeah, there's a whole load of treasure behind the school. Rover and I do expeditions all the time. Yeah, toys as far as the eye can see, snacks as far as the snout can smell. Oh my, sounds delightful. But where are the otherworldly riches? Where there are otherworldly riches, there must be a terrifying gatekeeper, like a dragon guarding the horde, no? That's the best part. The dragon wants you to take their treasure. That sounds amazing. It's trash, Olive. They're talking about trash. And I'm certain no one condones you all dumpster diving and dragging the smell of garbage into the school. But it can be such a waste. Why take the trash out when you can take the trash in? And by in, I mean in my mouth where it belongs. Perhaps another dog's trash is a cat's, another cat's treasure. Well, that's some deep stuff you're stepping in, Felix. Thank you, dog. It's Doug. Thank you, Doug. And you as well, Rover. You're like such a fool of believing you were nothing but destructive cat maulers. The only thing we maul is garbage. And sometimes electrical cords. I maul those things as well. It appears you all have a very important conversation. Olive and I will take our leave now. Bye, guys. We'll save some trash for you, too. Hi, Angel. You're not angry at me. Hello, Olive. Hello, Angel. I mean, no, dear. I mean, Patches. Hey, you guys. It's, it's so nice being back in my body. I don't like that you cut my fur, though. Well, I don't like that you grew my fur out. But one fur is nice, and yours grew so much in such a short time. Did I stutter? Please don't fight. Fight? No, we just talk like this sometimes. Oh? Don't worry. I thought resolving my issue with Angel using violence has begun to make me feel dead. Why not be upfront about your feelings, hmm? Yeah! Kill them with brutal honesty. That's what my mother always says. My mother dead of five years. No! <laughs> Baby steps, I suppose. It's refreshing to see you back to normal, Patches. Oh, really? It seemed an awful lot like everyone liked me more with Angel in my body. Oh, no! I'm sorry to have given you that impression, but in truth, I was only supportive of your behavioral change because I thought it was you. You've become more and more distant since middle school, and I see you being open was a relief. Well, that would be quite petty of me, wouldn't it? I'm sorry I worried you, Luna. I just absolutely despise being open about these things, these so-called emotions. That's right. I can pretend it, I can't pretend it's the easiest thing to do. Just know I care about you. You're the best vice president I could ask for. Aww. All pulls everyone into a group hug. We better bid farewell to our friends before we leave. See you next club meeting, Patches. See you whenever. Big kit. Tigger and Holly are in the middle of a, a heated conversation. Whoa, so you had no arms? Yeah, it was a huge inconvenience. I just kind of sat there all day. Man, how would you play sports without arms? Don't. Don't play sports? Sorry, I don't get it. You just do something that doesn't require arms, like sitting. Or like soccer. You know, like, well, I guess you could technically play soccer. Or skateboarding, or rollerblading, track and field. Uh, well, I've never done any of those things, and having no arms on top of that would just, I'd just embarrass myself. No one laugh at me. Okay, but, will they laugh at you if I pounce on them and do this? Tigger flexes real hard. <laughs> no, but I will. Well, that's good enough for me. Now my body's healed, I'm just gonna play it safe and stick to reading. But, I always did think ice skating looked pretty. Maybe it'd be easier if I started to start if I had a friend with me. Yo, let's do it! Alvin Patches decide to let the newfound friendship blossom. Now you three. I'm upset that I didn't get the chance to make you happy. Oh my gosh, today was the best day ever. All of you literally spent all day reading, snacking, and almost banished to the Shadow Realm by your so-called best friend. Almost. 
I'd say any day where we're not brutally murdered is a pretty good day. I'm gonna spark you on this one. Well, I think today would only be a win if we all got milkshakes. Milkshakes. Remember the first time we got milkshakes? Yeah, Sparky wouldn't stop eating my fries. They were my fries! I'll treat you to fries, Brownie. That'll make them taste way better. Everyone from Patches is chatting about milkshakes and diner food. He fidgets a little. Oh no! We're making Patches feel left out. Wow, Oliver, you're doing a better job of singling me out than I ever could. Oh no! Sparky feels the urge to howl as well. Honestly, Patches, the first time we got milkshakes kind of sucked. My feet were covered in blood. We had to hide Coco's cat ears around under a, dun sun, uh, a dumb sun hat. And Sparky wouldn't stop eating my fries. I paid for those fries! And I like that sun hat. Maybe if you come along, we can get up some real shenanigans. The non-lethal sort, I mean. Like unscrewing the tops of salt shakers? Yes! Genius! I love it! Well, I'd love to join you, but Oliver and I have plans tonight. And I'm not just saying that out of spite. We will commit petty crimes another time. <sighs> have fun being lame. See you later, Patches. If you ever want an outlet for your uh, violent tendencies, we can work on it. We can work out together sometime. See you next time I visit Hachiko High. I mean, if the faculty can ever forgive us for killing them, resurrecting them as zombies, then leaving them to wander the woods while we free or we, we had a free reign in the high school for a day. We might be in luck. Ginger and Mittens said they're discussing ways of improving cat and dog relations between our schools. Seriously? Thanks for the heads up. I'll definitely join them on the endeavor. Alright. Well, that's everybody. Big pile of leaves. Let's go. I want to see you eat peanut butter. Let's go. I'm looking forward to seeing you eat an entire jar of peanut butter. Yay! Perfect ending. You win! I think that's what that means, is that we got the best ending, though I wonder how much of that is true. Mind you, like, I know there's a chance that we could probably get an even better ending if we made everybody super, super happy, but rather than do that myself, I'm going to leave that up to you guys, because chasing after every ending is great and all, and showing it off to everybody is even better, but if I'm going to be honest with you, Personally, I think there's more fun in being able to craft the experience yourself. Besides, I keep only pissing off one person really bad. Or two people really bad. Technically, one really, really pissed off and one just neutral. Credits time! Hi, I'm Denny. I drew everything, wrote everything, programmed all the easy stuff. I'm Andy. Powerful programmer who helped with the super tech support. Soundtrack was made by Leon Beckers. The background personas were designed by the donors to the Hope from Home. Were designed by donors to the Hope from Home COVID-19 charity. Huge thanks to the Pancake Puppies for the beta testing, and this game keeping my fear furry hell alive for your weird and beautiful memory. It's been a ton of fun working on the Perfect Apocalypse series. This game marks its end. Doesn't mean PA will disappear forever, though. Bits of PA-related contact might resurface every so often. Be always the studio baby. The grotesque, satanic, furry baby. We'll be working on more games. Follow us online to keep updated. Already do. Thanks again. It's a shame that this has to mark the last episode of this series, or at least for now. No, I'm not saving. Um, the last episode of this for now. I'm hoping they do more with this later on. It'd be nice to see it. I kind of love the fact of multiple endings. I love being able to make people happy. And also, this one marked the one where you were actually just able to straight up murder everyone because you were playing as Patches rather than playing as Olive. Um, that being said, I've already followed these guys on Itch.io and I'm looking forward to everything else that they put out because they put out two other games. I just haven't had a chance to look into them yet. Anyway, this has been Perfect Apocalypse Patches Inferno, the last, of, the last of the series, for now at least. I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope to see you in the next video, and like and subscribe if you enjoyed yourself. Anyway, see you later.